Hello, welcome here if you are joining me and uh, I'm here to discuss what we call cluster farming. You see, we are uh, in the last few days we've been discussing about uh, in the last few days we've been discussing about uh, farm machineries, farm farm machinery farm workers, we've been discussing the challenges that is revolving around human resources on the farm. And uh, at the long run, everybody will always come to the conclusion that farm machinery is uh, having a cluster farm will be good and uh, it's going to be the best thing for the farmers to work with. So I wrote about it this morning, but I felt let me just briefly explain some little things about it. Now, what is cluster farming? Cluster farming, what is cluster farming? Cluster farming is the process by which farmers are, the farmers that are producing the same type of crops, they are living in the same environment, they are in the same locations, and they are producing the same type of crops. That is cluster farming. As in, it must not necessarily be a farmer that the cluster, cluster means you, there is a center, you are at a place, and uh, maybe we have 50 farmers, 100 farmers, or 20 farmers in a location. They are producing the same crops, and uh, they are working together. Now, the benefit or the advantage of it, you see, when you are talking of clusters, and uh, we can't form cluster when I'm in Oyo State, and somebody is in Ogun State, and somebody is in Ondo State, and somebody is in Akure, it's not possible. Cluster fa farming is a practical thing. As in, it's not in an internet work, it's not, yes, we're trying to take it, make it digital, expose ourselves to the internet, but it's still a practical, or practical thing that happens on land. So, there's no way I'll be farming in Oyo State, and me and somebody in Ogun State, we now say we're in cluster. It won't work. The only way cluster can work is if we are supplying our vegetables to the same market, we can have a cluster market where we supply our vegetables to. But for farming, we cannot have a... The, your fa the farmers have to be in the same location. And now these are the advantage. Like I said, I'm not going to spend much minutes because, like I said, we are, short we are shortening between our electricity and everything right there. So I'm going to, uh, what we do is, the first thing, if the farmer benefits if you're in a cluster. Now, this is the challenge I see. Most people stay in Lagos, they stay in Kaduna, they stay in Sokoto, they stay in the Abuja, and they want to farm. I, let me give you an example. Let me use myself as an example. I'm not from a your state. I'm not anywhere near here. I'm from Ikiti State. I live, you know, understand. And uh, I don't even live around here initially. I live in most places. But when I want to farm, when I want to start my farm, did somebody I met on Facebook suggested and said, there's land in all your states. And uh, when he said there's land in all your states, he even offered me his own land, which is in Agua Modu here. So I moved, I followed the land to come to this place. So I'm not an indigenous of this place. So it is the land, because I need the land to farm, that made me to come around this place. And I got there, I got the land I will use, and I decided to stay and farm. So when people now, when we say cluster, cluster, people, so recently somebody was asking me, he wants he want to plant coconut and he wants to see a farm, and he would prefer farming in Ogun State and everything. I just said, okay. I know I don't respond to that kind of thing because why would I respond? Because at the end of the day, look, I travel miles to come here. I'm here. I'm communicating with you guys. I'm here. As I'm here, I more than 500, six, what am I saying? More than 600 people have come to visit me in Agua Modio. You know, I have a training school where I train people and I get them jobs after the training. So several people have been coming here. I've brought a lot of people to this community and I'm not from this community. I came here purposely because of land for farming. So now, when I now say cluster farming, cluster farming, see, the only solution to say, I will say something, you, I want to start a farm. On my farm right now, as I speak with you, I have a, I have a borehole. There's another second farm we are trying to develop. There's a dam. We are creating a mini dam on the other second farm. Now, assuming you, two, three other people, they come around, the dam will be useful and the land Everybody can take one one acre and you work on your own farm, you work on your own farm. At the end of the working, I'm not saying I'm not inviting anybody. I'm just using it as an example. I'm just citing how cluster works. So at the end of the during the pro project, if you're having challenges, you can call on anybody because imagine you're not the only one in the environment, you're not the only one in the community. You can call on people and then they will show you this is what to do, this is what to do. That is cluster farming. And then because you are all planting the same thing. Let me follow my right up so that I will not just spend more of the time. So now, the advantage, let's discuss cluster farming. Now, the first thing, the first advantage a cluster has is fund. We were discussing today about the not having access to fund. You do know something? Every international body that is coming to Nigeria, yes, I follow the land, every international body, IFDC, uh, Kinecon, any, you know where they go to? They go to the northern part of Nigeria. 
In 2014, I was doing a project with IFDC. I was fortunate to be there because uh, because one of the uh, somebody there met me during Kolesipi training, and he was wowed by the work I was doing with the farmers. That oh, you are doing this in the southwest, so they put my name there. I joined. I become part of the program. I and the program is mainly northerners that are there. Why? I don't blame them because they're the one farming. There's no type of thing you are, you understand? They are the one farming. A northerners, that's why a northerners will live. Do notice if you are living in Lagos, when it's time for planting tomatoes or it's time for planting pepper, you will see your megad, your security man, your this, they will tell you they are going to the farm. They are going home to farm. They will leave whatever they are doing in the city, they will go. It's not that they want to go and start a fresh farm. No. There is a farming community. As in, if you come to that community, you have access to land, you pay for the land, you rent, you are not buying. You rent the land, you all come there. As you all come there, you rent, you take your own portion. Because you are in group, you will not be tiring. It will not, it's interesting. They live and sleep on the farm for the period of planting and harvesting. Then during harvesting, you will see trailers. You see all those trailers though, that come to Lagos. It is not from one farm. But the trailer will just come. You see, those women from my area here, we go to, they go to the north to go and buy tomatoes. The trailers will just come and pack. <laughs> the trailer will just come and pack. As the trailer pack like this, different farmers will be bringing basket. And the different farmers, you know, I, is a farming community. Miles. Different miles. Long miles will see farming community. So they load the vehicle. So they can load three, four, five trailers right there. Because it's a cluster. So when organizations, international bodies, organizations, money, fund is coming, where will it go? Where's your own cluster? You are in the north, you are, you are in the southwest here, you are in your state, you are in Abekuta, you've been roaming the street, you don't have a job, but you cannot farm. See, it is not until when you take the, I was telling you, I'm not the one that takes the hose. I don't hoe, I don't weed. But if you as a youth, you can do little, little things on the farm. That's not even why I'm talking this afternoon. It's about the cluster. So cluster easily have access to fund because they will know this, there's something they do in one cooperative one time. You know what they do? When they want to borrow you money in a cooperative, you have to bring four people. Why they are, do you know why they are doing that? Because they know four of you cannot run away at the same time. Four of you, you understand? So you bring maybe three or four surety or guarantee. And these people will stand for you because we are in the same group. We're in the same cluster. That is the way northerners are having access to fund. Now, if me, I want to ask somebody to give me fund, who will stand for me? I'm the only farmer in my community that is, that is doing what I'm doing. So who will stand for me? But if we are up to 10 or 15, they know all of us cannot run away at the same time. All of our farms cannot fail at the same time. Then the, other, the first advantage is fund. You easily have access to fund if you're in a group. <laughs> yeah, you can watch it on my YouTube. I always post them back on my YouTube. Adishola Inka, Inka Adishola. Just go to my YouTube. You see Adishola Inka, Inka Adishola. I normally move the videos to my YouTube so that you can follow it up there. So you have the fund. Number one, you have access to fund. Somebody is asking, hope I can get the recording of the broadcast so that one can go back to it later. It will be on my YouTube, on my YouTube channel. Actually, I want to be doing live on my YouTube, but because I've not had 1,000 subscribers. So please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube so that it can just directly be there. I want it to be copied from Facebook and put in there again because if it's on Facebook, it will disappear. As in, it goes, you won't be able to see it again. But if it is on YouTube, you can easily go back and refer to it anytime you want to go through it. Okay, and you can, you, you can go back to it very fast anytime. So please, if you get to my YouTube channel, please help me to subscribe so that once I get the 1,000 or the normal something, I can be posting live just as I'm speaking with, as we're discussing like this. Now, fund. Cluster will easily have access to fund. The second thing is farm workers and machinery. Look at this. If we are, do you know in the north, there are plenty of machineries. You know why? One, because there are like plenty farmers in the same place as in 100, 1,000 farmers in the same, in a very large area. So when, when you put tractor down, even me, I can go and borrow money to buy tractor and give them. Then I will buy the attachments to the tractor and put. So anytime they are farming, you know, you make your money because the tractors will just be working and they'll be handing your money for you. Because there are plenty of farmers in the same location. So when you, they will have access to farm machineries and also farm workers. Let me tell you, you know what the Northerners brothers do? 
Most of them, when it's time for planting and everything, they go back home. So right there, you cannot say you cannot get farm workers because there are people that, everybody looking for a job, no, there's a job here. So you don't have any excuse. Or like us, that will be roaming the streets and be carrying certificates around and be doing it. No, you don't have any excuse. You know where you can, if you want to work per day and make money, you know the location you go to. Kano is tomato. Go to uh, Kebi is onions. Go to, you know, they have locations like that. So you just take your whatever, go to that area and you get what you, and you get job. Per day jobs, yes, you get per day job. It is when they are not in farming season. You see those malams come to Lagos and be carrying jigger and everything and stay on the road and be looking for building construction. If it is farming season, they will not stay. They are back in the village because they know there's work to do and they more, they make money. The second the other one is fixed price. You see, the major challenges every farmer has in Nigeria. You cannot take your produce to the market and fix your price yourself. You know why? Because they know we are not our mouths are not we are not coordinated. We are uh, hey. now if you, but let's assume you are in the same location. All the farmers can agree and say, okay, we are selling our tomato ten ten thousand naira. If you know a farmer that need emergency money because it belongs to that group, you can easily lend him take go and use it for your emergency. But we are not selling on ten ten on ten ten thousand naira. Let me see how the other buyers we say they are not buying. Because they don't have other alternative, they don't have any other place to go and buy. And the farmers have said so. That is when union, when National Union of Road Transport Workers, when they said they are on a strike, who can change it? So farmers are the largest producers, they are the largest union that is supposed to be in Nigeria. But because we are not coordinated, because they are not in cluster. Let me give you an example. Right now, people are looking for tomatoes. People are looking for vegetables. Let's assume there is a cluster that produces that. They will dictate their price. They will dictate their price now, and they will keep on dictating their price, even when it's surplus. Because by the time it gets to the surplus time, they will have created a place. Yes, sir, we don't love ourselves. We don't at all. Everybody wants to be big man, big madam. Sorry, guys. <laughs> so, why? So that by then we'll have created a place, a cooling system. So, it's, as you're in the cluster, you have it, so put it in the cooling system. And then, when somebody comes, you dictate, you say, this is what, imagine. I, let me tell you something. Why most times farmers, we're always in debt. I, mean, I always use myself as an example. I'm not going to lie to you. Do you know why we're always in debt, farmers? Because I know, I go to the market, I buy pesticide, 4,000 naira. I go to the market, I buy, uh, I'm buying manure, poultry waste, eh? Poultry waste alone is 3,000 naira per bag. Poultry waste. It be a DJ, poultry waste. I'll go to the pot, poultry waste, we buy. But now, you know, everything I've got price. The price of everything you buy, you write it down. But farmer cannot say, this is how much I want to sell. Farmer, we can never, is not, uh, cannot calculate and say, okay, I spend one naira, I send two naira, okay, I spend ten naira to produce, so I should be having an interest of maybe two naira. You understand? Farmer cannot decide that. It is the market that will tell the farmers what they will buy. So, at the end of the day, most times, farmers are selling lower than this production price. It is only when it is scarce in the market, when nobody is getting anything, that farmer can get a bit of some, a bit, a bit of money. It shouldn't be so. And these are the advantages of cluster. But like I said, everybody just wants to be in the city. Everybody, you know, people will be asking me why don't you have a training in the city in Lagos? Don't you have? I just keep smiling. Where are the farms in Lagos? Where is the land in Lagos? Now, the next one is technical support. If we're in a group like that, if there's a cluster and everybody, maybe 140 farmers are planting in a group, no one, if, if anyone is having challenges, everybody will quickly take it off because you know if you don't quickly tackle these challenges, it will eventually get to you because you are planting the same thing. So we might even be able, as a group, the farmers will be able to, to, to pay a specialist or to get a specialist to do to check the farm for them as in, okay, okay, come on, an agronomist, we're having these challenges, how do we sort it? Or irrigation problem, how do we solve it? Or this, how do we solve it? That is what they are doing in the north. Now, security. <laughs> you see, I don't like to scare people, but sometimes it's good to tell you the truth. The farm areas are not secured. Yes, the bandits is not yet here, but we have X-Men disturbing the farm. So, if, see, there's something we notice. If a farm is big, if a farm is very big, as men are scared to enter. You know why? They believe the person that owns the farm must have been one government workers or whatever. So this, likewise, if farmers are all together, you know, the farm will be open and wide. They will move back because they know this is an association and they can deal with them. Let me tell you what happened on the, on the farm here. Anytime uh, X-Men go and destroy farmer's farm, 
maybe sometimes the farmer will catch the because if you go to the police, police will tell you go and catch the cow. Imagine me going running after a cow. <laughs> it's funny. So it's not this. There are times you just get to your farm, you see cattle there. You just be looking because at the end of the day, how do I catch cow? Honestly. So they will just destroy the farm and go. It's your luck that day. That is what is happening on the farm. I'm busy here with you guys. Now, when the police now say go and bring the cow, so farmers will now go and be, they go and be hanging around and be looking for. <laughs> <laughs> the cow, the cow is really funny as I'm explaining it, but this is what we are zapping on the farm. So, they, 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 then when they eventually some farmers are lucky, they used to go with rope. But when you see cow, you start calling people in this in the, in the village, come on, come and catch her, come on, you know, that kind of thing. They will run there, they will go and catch the cow. If they are lucky, they will get, if they are not lucky, they will not get. If they are not lucky, uh, S men we wish we uh, we match at them all. If it's at night, as men will match at them. I'm being sincere with you. But you know, during the daytime, they know farmers will quickly rally around. So now, if they catch the car, I'm talking of security. <laughs> so if they catch the car and they get to the police station, you know what happened? The police will ask them to tie it down. After tying it down, the full honey will come. The owner of the car, the one they caught, the, they will come. When they come, the uh, policeman will now say the farmer should go and be negotiating with the cattle, with the cattle owner. Ah, ah. But I want this so so amount, pay me my farm. Police will not agree, they say you should go and negotiate. Then Fulani will tell you they will pay you 10,000 naira. <laughs> eh? At the end of the day, policemen will be telling you, I better collect it now. What if you didn't meet them on your farm? Or what if the cow will die on your farm? Do you know the funny thing? If farmers catch cow and you take it to the and you take it to the to the police, and the police will not police are always behind Fulani. They will not say they are behind them, but you know they support them in their judgment. At the end of the day, the farmer will be giving maybe ten thousand. Not minding whatever has been destroyed on the farm, but if Katu, if Katu died on a farmer's farm, the farmer will be forced to pay that money to pay for that cow. Yes, I'm being sincere with you. Okay, farmers now it's they were telling us if farmers put uh, if you put poison on your farm and Katu ate it and die, they will force you. The police will force you to pay for that Katu. Please let me leave that situation. That's another incident again. Honestly. Anyway, I told them I'm still waiting for the day cattle will die on my farm. Unfortunately, I don't use all those chemicals. You know, farmers use it to preserve things on their farm. Cattle will go there, they will go and destroy it, they eat it. But if they die, police will see hook them. The farmers will pay. There's a farmer that paid last year they, because they said he put something on his cashew farm. Cattle will go there and go and destroy it. And then they had poison. If they die, they will still hold the farmer. And police will still be justifying it. Recently, our DPO was even on the... On, justifying it the video was going around at a meeting here okay that's the technical but if, if, if farmers are in group now why did i bring out this story if farmers are in group what they would always say dpo or they all of them they'll be saying and they will get take it to court and they always remind you farmer that the estimates they have they they are at the top as in um they have backings whatever whatever they scared farmer so most farmers are not ready to take it up so they will just take whatever they offer them but if there's a group like in the north, S -men, I know Esmen are disturbing them, but it's not, they won't disturb the farming community as much as they are disturbing the farming community in the southwest. Because here, there's no cooperative, there's no agreement, whatever. So if, if you are having challenges with the, the farm, you are alone solving it. But if there's a group, it is not the farmer that will go, it is the group. And they will have a group lawyer. See, honestly, that is the essence of clusters. The next one is transportation. Do you know if you are taking a thirty, if you are taking a thirty ton trailer from? Uh, I said I was spend thirty minutes. Okay, I, I, if you are taking a thirty ton trailer, trailer from the north to Lagos, you will pay less than. And from the north to Lagos, if you are taking a thirty ton trailer, trailer for for twelve hours, which is not from the northern part to Lagos, you will pay less than somebody taking the same thirty ton trailer from Oyo State here, which is five hours or six hours to Lagos. We pay more than the people coming from the north. Why? I will explain. In the north, when the trailers get to the north, they have they know there's competition. There are several trailers because there's a big farm there, there are big farms, and then it is if you don't carry it, another person will carry the load. You understand? As in if you don't carry, another person will carry. It. So they don't do shakara as much as they will do. But in the southwest, yeah, it's even me that will be calling trailer from Lagos to say, please come home. Oh. Before the trailer will come. I don't know if you understand. So it's difficult transporting things from our side here to get to Lagos. If I want to take one basket of tomato to Lagos, I have to charter a bus or a truck. 
Meanwhile, in the north, if you want to take one basket, you just go to where they are loading and add your one basket to the load because other people are already joining their one, one basket to two baskets. And the price will be because the, the trailer already has a fixed price. So if everybody is dropping one, one basket, one, one basket, you are sharing the money to pay. So it's less. Compared to me, if I have just, even if I have 10 baskets here, I still have to charter a full load of bus. Because if I'm not chartering, nobody will carry it for you. So these are the advantages of cluster. I was saying the other time, in, the, in Kano, there are 23 dams in Kano. In Oyo State, here, there are 22 dams. The 23 dams in Oyo State, are, in Kano State, are fully utilized in dry season in production of food. The 22 dams in Oyo State, none is being used. Can we just have one? I don't know of other states. Ekiti has about, Ekiti State too has dams. There was a time I was researching all those things. Like that, like that. I don't know if you get it. So, guys, I just said, like I said this afternoon, that I'll be discussing cluster. When we were discussing farm machinery yesterday, it's come back to cluster. When we were discussing uh, farm workers, it's come back to cluster. Two, uh, about six years ago, or uh, some years back, I was looking for where I would supply tomatoes, supply vegetables to. So I was with Spars. I was with Spars, though I was with uh, ShopRite. So I was with Spars. You know what Spars said? They gave me their list. I think I have it in my email. They gave me their conditions and their list. They're, one of their conditions is that they want area where there are about 40 farmers with at least 40 acres. As in, it means each farmer will be responsible for one acre. As in, this farmer you are responsible for one. You understand? Why are they doing that? Okay, they are importing vegetables. Now, because they are importing, <laughs> because they are importing vegetables, it means if they are farmers in Nigeria that could produce it, they will not. They will reduce the import. But they told me they cannot just stop the import like that when they are not sure of what we are going to bring. You understand? So imagine having all this land surrounding the water, all those dams, all the land surrounding the waters and everything. I told you at the beginning of this class that I'm not from Oyo State. I'm not from this area. My first time of coming to this locality was to go and come and look for land to farm. My first time, my first day of coming to Aguamodwe, I came here to look for land to farm. Somebody gave me and said, look, I have land in Aguamodwe. Can you use it? That is how I got here in 2013. So when you tell me, you understand, when I tell you you don't want to do, your, you don't want to leave your comfort zone, I know what I'm talking about. So in short, what I'm saying is that now the 20-something dams in the south, not only in your state, every state has got dams, both government dams, both state dams, both everything that are not functioning in the south, south, southwest. There are irrigation dams that are not, they are not using it. We're not using it. And so these are the challenges there. Or food production, but if there's a, like spas, they are importing. Shop rights, they are importing. As in, they are importing vegetables. Vegetables are short-term crops. All these ones are being imported into Nigeria, and you know it costs money to import. They import from South Africa, from uh, whatever. Now, the moment they are importing, they are, we are exporting our own job because right there where they are producing it, the farmers are making getting paid there. The packers are getting paid. The security men are getting paid there. Every, you know, the line of uh, employment is long. So there's a huge benefit in, in, uh, in cluster. Another cluster, let me give you this. There's one of my team member then that went to um, Indomie Nodus. At Indomie Nodus, they, they import pepper. <laughs> they import chili pepper, dried chili pepper. You know chili pepper? They import dried chili pepper from India to, do, to make spices. <laughs> so they also want quantity. Okay, look at this incident. If they stopped importing, and we will only produce, we can't even produce what they need. Only me cannot produce, I keep saying it. Only me cannot produce. So imagine if there are other farmers that, that other people that, okay, I want to learn too, or I want to produce too. Let's even give, give me land or let me find land near you. Let me also produce. And then we we'll become like 20 or 30. Because I know most people will be thinking, ah, you are staying in your own place. You are telling us to move. This is not my home place. I came here because I, want, I came to look for land. So that's why I have to bring it up again. So you find out that there are opportunities, there are these things when it's working cluster. In Kenya, on a daily basis, Kenya exports flowers, common flowers. They export flowers, they export vegetables. I have a friend in Kenya. She, she's a small time farmer, but she exports. You know what I mean? She exports, she travels internationally to attend, uh, to attend or the, they, they produce apps, common basil. 
uh, ethylene, basil, sunflowers. These are things they are exporting to Europe because they have group of farmers in the same neighborhood. So they're able to do that. See, yes, I'm living in a, in a rural community, in a farming community, but the old type of farmer will never adopt the new system because they always believe it's something they've been used to, this is something they've been doing for a and you understand, and they don't have the finance, they don't have the capacity. Yes, our government has a lot to do, but sir, I'm at a point now, I don't even want to bring in government into anything because you definitely know they will not do anything. Okay, last two, two months, I was traveling, a man who we was chatting, he was like, hi, he was impressed with what I was doing. He said, ah, I should go and meet the commissioner for Kinika. There's one commissioner close to us here. Yeah? I went to meet the commissioner. The commissioner referred me back to local government. I should go and meet chairman. I did not go because I look at it. This is nonsense. The same thing with all of them. So as far as Nigerian is concerned, I beg, leave the politicians alone. They cannot, they will not do anything tangible. It is not left for people that have interest or people that are involved. So if I have my personal money, if I have my personal money to be able to bring in youth and say, come, this is this land, oh yeah, you, and finance everything and let them practice on their own. But the youth, we need to sign an agreement. I did one about four years ago where I bring some people, I paid for everything. You know what? Theirs is just even to wait. I, may, I tried to form a cluster. They were messing up. It's only the elderly one they were performing. It's only the elderly men that joined us that performed. But the younger ones, there was even one, we've planted... We planted onions and he traveled and he did not come back again. It was when he assumed it will have been time for harvesting. He started calling them to ask her about the onions. That is youth for you. So I've learned a lot from there. So even if I'm going to do, if we are, someone is going to do that kind of project now, the youth needs to sign an agreement, commitment and everything. They are not committed. That's another, see, that's another challenge, a very big challenge again. When you talk of, you know, there's a lot. See, I would prefer, if I have my way, I would prefer it would be people that would be in the cluster, would be people that are already farming before, not just bringing in new youth. They are not ready to do anything. Sorry to use that word. So those are the advantages of clusters. If you have happened to watch the video, then I've explained transportation, the security, the technical, the fixed price. You'll be able to fix your price. But it has to be farmers living in the same area. It has to be farmers planting the same crops. It has to be farmers that are really, really ready to commit to this. But like I told you, they are importing. There's a lot of daily import into. There was a time I went to one of the stores there. If you see their stores with cauliflower, it's like a store full, imported. So they stored it. They'll be using it gradually before the next season. Can you imagine it? Cauliflower, one cauliflower is alone is about 2,000, 1,000, 3,000. I wouldn't even mind them giving me 500 now because if I plant five grams of cauliflower, I know what it will bring for me. But you see, honestly, I don't know what to say. Those are the challenges we are about. Like, like I keep saying, even me, planting a loan, being alone on the farm, there's a lot you have to pay triple for compared to when you have groups that you are working together. If there are groups, you will not pay much for so many things. You will not pay much for security. You will not pay much for transportation. You know, you know, you'll be able to fix your price because they will be forced to buy because they know there's no other alternative and you have it in bulk. And if they want to be buying continuously, you have it in bulk. So you can see uh, most of these food companies, they are importing their materials because there's no ready day and we are exporting the job. So I would like to, I hope with this, I'll be able to talk a bit about the, about the clusters and everything. The North are able to bring in much of the food because they are working in cluster together. And that's where we have today. But in the South, South, Southwest, forget us, we're not doing anything. So let's see if anyone that wants to join the cluster, let me see, let me see you. Then let's see if we can get land somewhere. Not my land, not me. People that can, people that are ready to leave their comfort zone. I wouldn't mind organize. Let's see how we can do something like that again. Because see, when you give information, I try to give. Okay, let's see what's the way forward, what's the solution. But I'm sure, I'm not sure we have ready, willing people that need to do that. Please don't send me messages. Just if you know you have interest. Okay, I send. Don't send me if you have interest. Comment through my Facebook. Okay, send me a message in my, in my Facebook inbox. Don't call me. I, won't pick, I don't pick calls anyway, except people that I have their numbers. I don't normally pick my calls. So you might find it difficult to get me. Okay, so let's see what happens. So if you have question, if there's no question, 
I'm, I tried. My 30 minutes is almost off with this. So please, you can check my... If you want to see, I've been doing a lot of videos. I will tell you why I need to do this. Information not shared is information lost. I have a lot of information at my fingertips. I've been on the farm. I've failed. I've passed. I've survived. I've not survived. I've... I've learned in a very difficult way and I've learned, I've had a lot of experience with me. I can keep telling you, moving from one topic to the other and I'll be sharing personal physical experiences. I can keep on doing this for the next, I don't know. So I try to bring it, why I'm bringing it up is that a lot of people, you know, there's food scarcity now. People say, ah, I want to start farm, I want to start farm. Be careful, one. Two, learn the basics. People just assume agriculture is something you can just jump in and start whatever. No. You need to learn the basics. You need to tread. And you really need to understand whatever. So that's why I started coming up with this. We were discussing farm machineries yesterday and everybody keep concluding cluster, cluster. For me, to farm a cluster now, you have to be on the farm right here. Not, you can't be in Lagos, I'm here and whatever. And like I told you, I personally moved to the rural side because I want to farm. Not because I'm from this location. So it's left for you if you want to leave your comfort zone or you still want to be in your comfort zone. So, guys, thank you for watching and I'll catch you some other time. Thank you so much.